What's going on, Badger Nation? It is Michael here. And today, I feel like playing the trumpets, one of these sounds, because it's a very special episode, just like they all are, except this one is extra special. I am super pumped to have my friend, someone I look up to, someone I admire and just generally have had absolutely fantastic conversations over the many years that I've known him. I'm very excited to have this true gentleman of the craft, Brent. And Brent, I've known you so long and I've always thought I knew how to pronounce your name, but I'm just going to say it now. <laughs> we have as our guest co-host on the show today, Brent. Here I go. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Zarodnik. That's that's pretty much spot on. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you kind of nailed it. I'm very worldly. I know a lot of things about a lot of different uh, <laughs> cultures and last names. Well, some of your listeners might be from the Czech Republic, and they will probably recognize it. I think you yourself have probably traveled there once or twice, so it's a it's a Czech name. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I went Czech on Slovak. a I went on a ro- rowboat in uh, Prague. Wonderful place. Excellent Amazing place. escape rooms. It's like in a castle. A lot of fun. That sounds promising. Yes. <laughs> um, but I'm super stoked to have Brent on the show. Brent, we're going to be doing a series of episodes together. Um, and I and sort of mm-hmm. my idea behind this is, you know, I could have had you on as a guest, just straight up guest. Oh, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you think about this feature? How do you like that feature? Um, but mm-hmm. instead, we're actually going to be co-creating uh, the next few episodes uh, to you know, really my vision is to have, you know, continue to have fun, try new things on the show. And I'm really excited uh, to share with the Badger Nation all of your experience and your insight and your take and approach on things. So I'm, I'm super wow. stoked about it. <laughs> Don't build me up too much. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also you know flattered you asked and I was more than happy to, to accept and jump on. Already, we've had a bit of fun here going back and forth about topics and such. So I, I look forward to digging into the next, uh, I don't know, I guess four or five episodes here we're going to do together. Really yeah. excited. Give me a give me a glimpse into uh, a day in the life of Brent. Where are you? So the audience, so the audience can also get in, get inside, uh, sort of where we're where we're talking here. Where are you based in the world? Uh, I am based in Montpellier in southern France. Beautiful, um, beautiful so name. So I live. Pretty close to the uh, pretty close to the Mediterranean down here. I've been here for about a year and a half. I lived in Paris before that. I've been in France for a couple of years now, um, full time. So thanks to uh, you know the, the situation this year, I haven't really left since March. So I've been very home based here. Are the, do you ever see any other Americans in France? Because like we can't go there right now. Uh, I got a couple of friends locally, but they're mostly Australians, Irish, and French. Uh, cool. So not really. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, a couple English people I know, but yeah, uh, not too many. Fair enough. And you've been doing Amazon advertising for quite some time as an agency owner uh, for a lot. So I imagine that takes up the majority of your working hours as well. That's Tell us a little right, bit yeah. about that. Yeah, since 2015, uh, started in the summer of 2015. I think it was actually August, if memory serves, and have a Google Ads background, kind of transition into Amazon at that point. And remember talking to you in late 2016, maybe even late 2015 about this. So I've, you know, I've known you in this space for a long time and I've always really looked up to, to you, especially for such a great teacher that you are um, in, in this space. And you know, the podcast that I'm now on uh, have been a big fan since episode one. I was really stoked when I heard you were starting it. So it's a must listen for the team, myself. I got a couple episodes to catch up on now that I got a bit more free time uh, this month. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I'm super stoked about it. Uh, I don't think you, you just for our own pump each other up, because that's what bros do. Um, <laughs> you didn't mention the name of your company, which I feel like I'd love the name. Oh, yeah. So we're AMZ Pathfinder. Uh, mm-hmm. AMZ, as anyone can guess. Uh, but Pathfinder, I think, is a good name because it kind of explains what we're trying to do. You know, help people kind of like... Uh, guide them down the path of advertising uh, on this platform because it can be uh, quite difficult. And that also goes along with uh, the ad badger pretty well. There's a lot of dangerous animals out there. You know, ad badgers helping defend you. We're guiding you. There's a lot of 
jungle yes. analogies going on here with Amazon. <laughs> yes. You haven't heard it yet, but uh, our new podcast intro is narrated by David Attenborough. Seriously? An impressionist. But oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I messaged you back in the day and said, wow, you know, the podcast is great, but I had to, uh, I had to like, you know, do laundry, uh, take out the trash. Like, all, and by the time I was done, you know, the intro was still going. I think I was... Uh, yes. <laughs> you got to have a running gag. That's the gag, the intro. Um, so I, I'm really stoked today because uh, we were brainstorming a lot of different topics. And we really feel like it's important to talk about new features. And there are two new features that literally we sort of just became aware of very recently. It looked like it got published maybe uh, at the very, very tail end of September. Um, and I think it has some interesting imp implications in terms of how we as Amazon marketers and business owners are actually start interpreting our data. It's almost like you, we see our data through a certain lens over and over and over again. And anytime we get an opportunity to view it from a different angle, meaning like view it from with a different metric in mind, it not only provides insight from that metric, but it also adds extra insight to the metrics that we already have. So I'm, I'm super stoked to sort of look at these two new sponsored brands reports uh, that you will see in your advertising account. And with that, let's jump in to our main segment. Okay, so Brent, we've got two reports here, two sponsored brands specific reports. Um, and right off the bat, a little frustrated we didn't also get this for sponsored products. Um, I, I sometimes feel like sponsored products is what makes Amazon advertising so great and is what, what sort of made it great in the first place because you know sponsored product conversion rates way outcompete anything that you could see on Google Ads, for example. So I love sponsored products. It's still, an, I, I, me personally, it's my favorite ad type to this day just because of its simplicity and reliability. So I would love to see that get new features added. But um, these are sponsored brands specific. And uh, what, are actually, what are the names of these two new reports? Yeah, so we have search term impression share and the other one that's also under that same drop down and probably marked as beta if you're going to go in your uh, advertising console report interface is brand category benchmark. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to clarify something else. These aren't available for sponsored brands video, I don't think. Are we just looking at sponsored brands, you know? Yeah, they're not. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's just correct. sponsored brands, no video. Video is a slightly different animal. Yeah, it's always a little frustrating how all of the different advertising types are so separate. You know, some things get a new metric, some things don't. This may be included in something, this one might not. There's always some, always some weirdness there. Um, let's take a look at the sponsored brands search term impression share report first. Um, you know, when you first downloaded this, um, you know, walk me through some of the, the columns that we actually have available to us that maybe that we've seen before already when we download this sponsored brands search term impression share report. All right. So as I understood it, looking at this, in our you know, preliminary kind of examinations, it, it's essentially a uh, search term report, or I guess you could say a targeting report mm -hmm. for sponsored brands. So it has all those columns present that you're used to if you've downloaded and examined that report recently, which you should, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's uh, fa fairly new you know, in relative terms, but it's great. Um, and so we have these other two new columns, right? Search term impression rank and search term impression share. Mm -hmm. And that's the interesting bit. And, and they're very like uh, early on in the sheet. You know, those are columns D and E. So yeah. they really put them right front row center for you. Yeah, they have the, the date, start date, end date, which is pretty typical. Um, and then they have customer search term. And then right next to it, they have search term impression rank, search term impression share right off the bat. And then they have the, you know, the actual keyword or the targeting that triggered the search term, match type, campaign, currency, clicks, impressions, click through rate, spend so on and so forth, all the normal metrics that we, that we see. And, you know, impression share is a carryover from Google Ads. And impression share is something I've been really eager to see inside Amazon advertising. I would have loved to see it inside the actual 
table when you're looking at your list right. of keywords or targets. It'd be awesome to see there because as we get into like how to use this data, it would have been awesome to see there. So it's you know a little frustrating that we have to go into the reports section to get it, but I'm super stoked that we have it now. Do you think it's fair, Mike, to say this is also share of voice? That's another term you hear bandied around a lot, and I think that means something similar. It's like, what what is your piece of the impression pie for a given, uh, in this case, search term over a time period, or maybe your campaign in this marketplace? Uh, is that is that the same thing? Is there a uh, is there a proper definition of share of voice? Like it, it, it's the it's the, it's the same spirit. It's showing you. Out of all the things, out of all the impressions, you have this percentage of them. Um, you know, meaning if uh, vitamins get searched ten thousand times a month, and you have one thousand of them, you have a ten percent impression share. Um, would you also call that like ten percent share of voice? Like, do you think that these will start to become used interchangeably? I think Amazon's probably going to keep it the way it is mm -hmm. uh, in this report, but that is a term terminology I've heard on other ad platforms. Share right. of voice. So some listeners may be familiar with that. I can't give a great example, but uh, from other platforms, I, I think they're the same thing. You know, I, mm -hmm. I welcome any kind of corrections, and I wanted to run it past you to see what you thought. But yeah, Seems I would say maybe similar. the same. The spirit, the spirit is the same. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, share of voice for an individual search. Yeah, I think it captures like the same eth like the same purpose of like this is your share of the total imp searches going on for this particular search. <laughs> what they don't say is how loud is your voice. <laughs> right. There, there's no measurement for that, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is trying to you know clue us in on 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 what that is. You know, using that that example, you know, where something gets searched, you know, a thousand times, and you have a hundred impressions. Uh, of the thousand, that's a 10% search term impression share. And I loved this because uh, I also, you know, was doing Google ads as well. And it was a really useful thing to have um, because, you know, right off the bat, the utility of this is really you're able to look at things that you have. You know, one utility is to make your best terms even more profitable, meaning you will be able to look at your keywords and, you know, you see something and maybe it's at, uh, you know, a nice a cost, maybe it's 20% and your target is actually 35%. Um, or conversely, you know, maybe something's like seven X ROAS and you actually only have a target of five. You can look at that and say, you know, it, it, do I have another data point that tells me to bid even more? Like, would it be even worth it? And I think that's an interesting cut thing to consider now because if you have a incredible ROAS 10x there's reasons to bid a little higher um, to you know basically make it a little bit more competitive for your competition uh, meaning you're able to afford a little bit more you know there's there's some paid traffic marketers that really like the idea of my goal is to pay as much as possible to make it more difficult for my competition so, so there's some of that going on there but what's cool about this is if you're already at a great ACOS or a great ROAS, now all of a sudden you have some data point that tells you you would actually get more impressions if you were to bid more. Uh, and that's what this impression share sort of tells you. If you're already at 100% impression share and you already have a great ROAS, well, then all of a sudden now you kind of know you're not going to necessarily pick up more impressions based off what the data has been over the last 30 days. Obviously, it could get searched more next month than the previous month, but the point is it sort of gives you another data point when deciding to increase a bid because if you already have 100% impression share, increasing a bid maybe doesn't have as much utility as it did previously. So this is, so this is you know, my one interpretation of the utility of a search term impression share. Right. I think that in, interpreted or maybe collated properly, because this is like a lot of rows I see in this sheet and it's split out by match types, of course, and customer search terms. If you're able to, you know, concatenate this, pivot this somehow and get like an average for your given search term, you might be able to come up with a, uh, a useful percentage here. And in terms of values, you know, I have a, a filter on, I'm looking at it just here, but I looked earlier at the same sheet and it goes anywhere from, uh, <laughs> 
with, with a very high level of definition. There's a lot of decimals here. Yes. Which of course, is just the expression of like a lot of decimals. Like yes. Seven places in some circumstances, which is, you know, that, hard to even make use of. That's what I've got too. And then sometimes yeah. I have one decimal place, 99.2. And then other times I'll have 91.9. Seven three two four four. Yeah, I got one here that's just twenty. So two zero <laughs> point, and then that's it. <laughs> but my point is, it goes from you know those really really low numbers, uh, percentage of a percentage to a hundred, like right on the nose. So it really is just a simple percentage for that given search term for that given match type in that campaign. That's as I understand it. Yeah. Um, so it's not showing it to you at the actual keyword target level it's showing it to you at the search term level um so i would ima i would imagine some kind of you know if you wanted to optimize things at the you know I ideally you know we're, we're getting aggressive on exact match terms anyway um, but i'm sure you could do a pivot to combine the search terms pull them back to the keyword that triggered them and then work with that uh, if you don't have enough data to optimize on the search term level um, yeah, so you know, interpreting this data, you know, my biggest search term for this particular uh, campaign was uh, this. You know, I, I got four hundred seventy-seven, four hundred seventy-six clicks. Um, I spent two hundred, and I made about twelve hundred. So I've got about a you know almost a twenty-five percent uh, conversion rate and about a seventeen percent return on. Uh, I'm sorry, seventeen percent a cost. 5.7 ROAS. So this is pretty good. This is beyond the target. And it's a pretty good term. I could bid more aggressively on this. And I only have an 88% impression share, which means I could bid a little bit more aggressively and potentially kick that up to 100 and capture you know the 12 extra points of impressions. And you know 12 over 88, uh, what is that? That's almost... Um, hold on, bear with me. <laughs> you know, that's about... I was going to say, wait, I don't do math live on podcasts. So. <laughs> I know. We like to be very vulnerable here. That's, so that's almost about 13 14% more impressions, clicks, sales that I could potentially scoop up by bidding more aggressively on this. So it gives us a lot more, you know, when I'm looking at this, it's a confirmation to be able to bid a little bit more aggressively. And conversely, my number two keyword, which coincidentally is, is very close to the, to the first search term here, um, I also have great numbers on that. Uh, 5X ROAS, 19% ACOS, except this one is already at 99.9% .9 search term impression share, telling me that if I were to bid a little bit more aggressively, all I'd really be doing is maybe making it a little bit more difficult for my competition. I wouldn't necessarily scoop up a lot more uh, clicks and sales. That's what I'm getting here as well. So if I sort this by just purely spend, so mm -hmm. at the, at the search term level, the top ones that I see uh, on my screen are anywhere from mid 80s to mid 40s kind of range. You know, there's not some of those outliers like 100%. Oh, really? Or, I have a lot know, of 100. I, I see one or two here, but these are for terms that um, are definitely low volume because I know mm. this account and the top one we have is at 84.6 and we're set as one, which we should talk about, by the way, column yep. D. Mm -hmm. But to share the metrics here, I mean, this has more than a uh, $1,000 spend in this given time period, but we have, uh, yeah, really high ROAS, 8.6. And so what this is telling me is we're already at 84% according to this. And, you know, we could maybe squeeze a little bit more juice from this, but we're already doing quite well with it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a four word search term. So you'd wow. assume, hey, that's probably, you know, fairly long tail. And it's, you know, some of the words in it are disqualifying, let's say. So like, mm -hmm. it's it's specifying a gender. So it's like, it's for yeah. men. So like, already 50% of the people are out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing well with that one. And, that, and this also brings to mind, like, how could we report on this with clients? Maybe mm -hmm. something that is, uh, not a common struggle shared by a lot of uh, people in the audience, but definitely something to consider um, for yourself if you're looking at your account. Um, you know, what is what is our share of uh, impressions for this? How can we maximize that for these ones that have great returns? Or like you said, Mike, if your ROAS is seven, you're looking at five as your kind of target. 
oh, well, we're, uh, we're leaving maybe some sales velocity and keyword rank on the table here that we could pick up. Yeah, it's sort of good confirmation to, to be able to know in your account, you know, whether you're reporting to a customer or just you're managing your own account. It's kind of cool to see your best keywords have high search term impression shares. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine, uh, you know, that's where we want to take this report. So if we look at this and we see our best uh, converting terms and you can sort it by conversion rate, you can sort by conversion rate. Uh, that's actually pretty interesting. I'm going to do that really quick just for fun. So I just sorted by conversion <laughs> yeah, rate. Yeah, try that too. All right, well, I've got two search terms over 100% conversion rate. I've got actually three. Um, and, you know, that just means they scooped up more orders than clicks. So, you know, I have yeah, one this, click and this two is, orders. <laughs> seems mathematically improbable, but when I do it by column S, so 14 day conversion rate sorted, the top one I have is 800%. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. They so one click, eight, eight orders. orders. Yeah. 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 Of course, this is a tiny sample. The spend here is less than a dollar. So obviously you have to filter for yeah. these kind of things, but yeah. uh, you know, fun, funny to look at. And this yeah. is the kind of product in this campaign where someone could definitely buy this in bulk or at a mm -hmm. larger account, depending on who they're buying it for. Maybe that's something that's not true for a lot of accounts. So you have to filter for that, obviously. Yeah, that's really good. Like throwing on another filter uh, to ensure that we're only dealing with things maybe with a reasonable amount of clicks, you know, over. Right. Or, or some spend over a dollar at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or over uh, $50. You know, so I have a good example. It's probably the fourth one down. It does have, uh, it does have 10 clicks, uh, you know, a 30% con conversion rate. Um, and, you know, something, and I only have a 75% impression share. So, you know, this is a good example of something that, you know, hey, I'm missing out on 25% of impressions. I should probably go in here and boost it up a little bit. Uh, also, too, it's interesting, um, you know, this is only sponsored brands data. So you can take this data over to sponsored products probably, too. Um, just you know, for your own edification and maybe where you should be getting more aggressive. So it's another data point to you know, determine places to get a little bit more aggressive. Uh, or if you were getting aggressive and you notice that, hey, I'm already at 100% for my sponsored brand ads, you know, maybe you can ease up off the gas a little bit. Here's another kind of idea. Could we triangulate how many impressions there are on Amazon from what we're paying for, like, let's say, a competitive customer search term and then what our impression share according to this report is, could we figure out like, hey, this is really high volume or is that just working backwards from basically using brand analytics to do the same thing? Right, uh, and, and you're saying to determine how many times it actually gets searched, period, on Amazon. Right, like yeah. how many impressions are there out there for this? And and this is, like you said, for sponsored for sponsored brands, but uh, is, this, is this only for sponsored brands impressions? I, I don't know, it's not, clear I, it's it's yeah it's it's not totally clear i would yeah. love to know if so i'm looking at one right now uh it has 597 impressions does that mean that this search term and it's a five word search term so it's very likely that this mm -hmm. only got searched 500 and i have 100 percent impression share does that mean that this mm -hmm. search only got searched 597 times on amazon.com in the marketplace Period. So I know exactly, like, is, is this Amazon's first actual real data point telling us exactly how much something is searched on Amazon instead of using, you know, uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of Chrome extensions are trying to, you know, free Chrome extensions will often sell how many times people searched certain things on Google or Amazon. And then tool providers, Amazon marketing tool providers can sometimes grab that data and then report it. So like they pay for like true view search data. Um, but is this Amazon's actual first real um, data point on how much an exact search term actually gets searched? I tried the same filter here, Mike. So doing it by, you know, 100%. So I have, a, I have a couple of those here. And this is a four word target and subsequent search term. Well, it's exact match. So it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, and sure enough, this is a uh, you know, $35 in spend. So I filtered for spend here mm -hmm. to get one that had some data. And the count of impressions here is 310. Right. So you can tell this is not a high volume search term. Mm -hmm. Definitely long tail. 
Uh, and we, we've cornered the market. I have good news. We've cornered the market. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so being able to you know, understand how your impression share, you know, how many times you're appearing for something, and especially for, for you know, there's certain keywords, that, you know, I talk to a lot of sellers, there's certain keywords they want to just own, they want to maximize, they want to work their way up towards a choice badge for it. They, they really want to get aggressive for this. This is a great way to just sort of zero in that, hey, we're at mm-hmm. the top. Like we're do we, we've got a hundred percent search term impression share there. Now there's an, another column here, which is search term impression rank. Um, I would say the search term report that uh, impression share report that I'm looking at is is in a not. It sounds a lot softer in competition than the one that you have. Like I have a lot of search term impression share at a hundred, and I also have search term impression rank pretty much all at one. And I have one search term that's a two. Um, but you know, the cool thing, when you opened up your search term impression share report, you saw something very different than that. Right, and I just now sorted again and cleared the filters by spend. So we're looking at just the top the top ones. We're doing good for some of them, we got one. Uh, but then I scroll down a bit, four, 10, six, uh, mm-hmm. seven, 11, and earlier on, we talked about one I had that was p- position 28, or actually, no, I take that back, not position. Uh, it, we were given a value of, of 28. So yeah. what, I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, so, so what, Are there what, 28 ad slots for sponsored yeah. brands all of a sudden? I don't think so. This is new territory. There's no, we, we actually searched the help documentation for impression share, and there's no reporting on this anywhere. There's no help doc from Amazon. So we really are sort of, cutting the the edge on what's new here. Um, so this column, search term impression rank, uh, we, you ha- we have everything from one to the 20s and so on and so forth. Uh, what's your interpretation of this? My first interpretation, which I now think is wrong, is that this was some kind of ad position rank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think it would say position instead. Right. But it says rank. So rank to me says ranked against the whole ecosystem. So that means, I guess, that we are, um, in terms of the number of impressions we're getting were number one for this in this given time period for this thing. I think that that's what it's saying here. Like if you were to, so, you know, you're looking at your search term and you you have so many impressions for it. If you have the most impressions, like when everyone else downloads their own search term impression share report, mm-hmm. if you have the most impressions, you'll be listed as number one right here. Mm-hmm. Right. That that's that's my thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I also thought it was position to, as well, but I think it, it definitely makes sense. Like, who has the the biggest sum of impressions for that particular search term? Um, tell me about the ones that you have, like in the twenties, um, because you have like sure. A, let me let me yeah. filter for this actually. And and fun fact, I have one here. Um, I don't know how. I just I just discovered it right now in the filtering. But you know the asterisk. Uh, it's a hard word to pronounce. Mm-hmm. That's usually for, um, you know, uh, I, I guess, uh, auto, auto campaigns, right? Mm-hmm. I have one of those in here under a customer search term is asterisk. I'm not ah. sure how, because this is a sponsored brands campaign. And as far as I'm aware, you can't set up an auto. But right. my search term impression rank for that is 1,225. Get out. Yeah. Uh, so that's strange. I can send you a screenshot later here. And then also I have some 53, 31, 23, and some of these, one of these is branded, not our brand. That's the 31. Mm-hmm. Um, and then these other ones are extremely high volume. Okay. Um, I'll just share one of them, women's socks. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're 28 for that. Yeah. You know, from an optimization perspective, is there any utility to this? Like, would there, would there be a time where you would, kind of like we just did with Impression Share, where you would, you know, sort by ROAS and then filter by impression rank and see if you're like over 10 for something or over five for something. This, this, I, you know, what do you feel like the utility is of this column search term impression rank? Uh, I think, I think that's an interesting idea if you filter for a high number. So let's say it's your priority keyword, one of your top five, you know, 80, 20 style keywords. What if you did filter for a search term impression rank that was uh, high? And then if you notice one of your, your big, your big main keywords in there, maybe you'd say, we need to push harder on this. Uh, that's one 
use case that comes to mind. But I think you have to be careful because we are looking yet again at search terms here. So like that's that's not a good conclusion to draw from a search term where you have thirty dollars in spend for the you know whatever time range you whatever time range you pull this for. Um, unless you have extremely segmented sponsored brand campaigns with an awful lot of spend flowing through them, would you be able to make that decision? I think with, you know, a lot of confidence, but Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the case only sometimes. Right. It almost seems like this, this is like a comparative feature. Um, and I, and I feel like the search term impression share is, seems a little bit more useful to me right off the bat. Like that, that's my take on these two new metrics here. And my mind goes to like, I wonder if we could mash this up with some other reports that we get. How would those two things be combined? How could we combine this with um, brand analytics? Uh, Mm Because I always think there's something in brand analytics that could be unlocked. They're always adding new features to that here and there. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, So this is the first new report. Um, Let's get some final thoughts here. Um, You know, I do think looking at your best search terms, and you know, best in terms of ROAS, ACOS, uh, conversion rate, those kinds of things, and seeing if you are missing out on any impressions, like you know, your impression share is low, maybe it's under 70, maybe it's under 80, that's an opportunity for you to get more aggressive and capture some more of that, uh, more of the searches. Or if you're already at 100, it might give you, um, you know, a moment of pause before you go out there and increase the bids on that. Any other final thoughts on search term impression share? I can't wait to figure out how to make use of this with a pivot. Yes. <laughs> That's my only ever thought. That's right. And, and with that, let's go to the second new report that we got from Sponsor Brands. Uh, here we go. So the second report, we have the Sponsored Brands brand category benchmark report. Um, Oof. What a mouthful um you know amazon skill and naming never ceases to amaze yes uh, you know i can't talk much because i thought the a good acronym for the concept of moving search terms that convert from a research-based campaign like an auto into a manual exact i decided to call that rpsb research peel stick and block which Mm -hmm. is uh not the best acronym so I, i can't talk too much about somebody calling a report sponsored brands Brand, category, benchmark, report, but here we are. Uh, And this is an interesting one. Uh, This definitely provides some data that you haven't seen before. And what I think is cool about it is we are getting, I think anyone loves, anybody loves who's, who's doing anything on Amazon. Anytime you get some kind of benchmark, some kind of insight into your competition, how am I doing? Am I doing well or am I doing not well? That is always such a super popular topic. So that's what this does. And, and this one's a little bit newer. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like a search term report with two extra columns. Um, however, it's not too difficult to understand, is it, Brent? No, I think this one's actually easier. Um, now, I don't know. Do we have to review what our, what our percentile is? Because that's pretty much the crux of this. Is, okay, is this let's, concept let's break of it down. Percentile. All right, let's break it down. I'm taking the SATs. I, <laughs> I get a report back that says I'm in the 10th percentile. Oh. Is that good or bad? Uh, or no, no, no. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't label people's intelligence as good or bad. Everyone's <laughs> unique in their own way. Uh, we will say, is that th- close to the highest scores or the lowest scores? Is that promising for your Stanford application <laughs> or not promising for your Stanford application? <laughs> yes. uh, I would say it's a, you're, you're on the lower end, right? So a percentile is... Uh, you know, if you're if you're 10, that means that only 10% of people are falling below your score. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And then that means the you know, majority are higher. So typically a percentile, if you're achieving a percentile in a metric that you want to be achieving, mm-hmm. um, you know, not like uh, <laughs> money spent on Amazon. I'm in the 90th percentile. <laughs> um, no, no. Things like low ACOS, good ROAS. I imagine those mm-hmm. are things where you want to be 80th percentile, 90th right. percentile. Right, top percentile. Uh, you know, pe- uh, people say my baby's in the 95th percentile for height as a very tall baby. Oh, they're bragging already. <laughs> they're bragging already. <laughs> um, so that's an, that's an important concept to know as we start interpreting these. And what this benchmark does is it tells you, it, com- it, it tells you your metric and compares you to the 25th, 50th, 
and 75th percentile, that is what uh, they give us uh, in some key metrics here. Um, and it's different too because it's not broken out by uh, search term anymore. No, this time it's uh, what, brand and category. So we have a lot less rows in here. I don't have mm -hmm. to do any scrolling. I can yep. see everything right on my screen. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> yes. What am I gonna do with this gigantic monitor I have? Yeah, I spent all this money on all these inches of digital real estate, what's the point? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so it, it basically, there's nothing to do to prepare this report. It literally has the brand in column C and then next to it is all of the categories that I appeared for. Um, and th this isn't, uh, to be confused. I don't think this is, this is not to be confused with like product targeting where you're, it's, it's not like some kind of targeting report, like you're targeting a, a category. This is the search terms, uh, of products that you triggered and the category that the people are inside uh, for the sponsored brand ad. So what I see in mine, I see automotive and then I see a uh, category down automotive exterior accessories. And then I have one even further automotive exterior accessories, um, you know, covers and frames. Yeah, so so we're, we're cascading through the browse nodes. Essentially we're, Starting at that that top level, everyone knows sports and outdoors, health and household. But then, as soon as you get like four nodes deep, uh, yeah, things start to get real. <laughs> yes, you're you're now looking at um, uh, I, I, novel novelty, uh, <laughs> Christmas, uh, no. Santa, yes. chocolates. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, you know, you're you're drilling down. So what this does is it tells you how many impressions you had in that category, and then it compares. And then it shows you the peer impression, 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile. Um, so it shows you, you know, how many impressions other people that have this category in their report, uh, how many impressions they got. So, you know, for example, um, and I need to add the, the commas here. So for example, in the automotive space here for this particular brand, I had 266,000 impressions. And the 25th percentile was 176. So I am doing more impressions than the 25th percentile. Then they show me the 50th percentile, which is 255,000 impressions, and I have 266. So I'm actually doing more than half of people. So I'm getting you know, just about average here. And then the 75th percentile is 540,000 impressions. So I can see that I'm, I, you know, the people that are spending in the 75th percentile and up are doing t more than double impressions than what I'm doing. So, you know, pretty I interesting point there. And we've all got some other metrics here too. Yeah, uh, I was just getting a bit lost in thought with mine here because um, I was wondering if it's possible if we could, you know, the categories, since we have so many sub nodes, could we like back it out in the sheet and kind of, uh, you know, combine it. So a good example here I have is uh, health and household and we have four or five underneath. Mm -hmm. Could we combine all the data for that in one? I'm not sure. It's a question maybe to answer another time. My um, number is the same. Oh, you're, you're saying my number is the same for every single one, uh, meaning in the automotive exterior accessories and then covers and frames, my number of impressions is the same in every single cell. So I think that means I only got impressions in covers and frames. I didn't actually get any just with the, is that right. what that means? Yeah. Uh, cause, cause mine's not, I have one here that's a real outlier. So it's got 2.6 million. And then mm. the next sub note is 40,000. Uh, right. that, that seems like an error, quite frankly. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> that would mean um, you, cause, cause the customer themselves may not be drilling down. Mm -hmm. And that could mean that's how, that's how you could pick up more impressions at the top level than the drilled down level. Yeah, but some of them do match yours in that they're the same number across right. the board. Right. Yeah. Anyway, but I'll, I'll continue to click through it. Right? This is the next one we're looking at here, right? Mm -hmm. So click through it. This is a bit more simple, I suppose, because it's not based on an absolute value, but it's rather a you know a percentage. Yeah, I so, really like this one. Yeah, this one, this one is also my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, click through rates, simply compare yourself to the 25th, 50th, 75th percentile and get a good idea of where you are. I would say for this particular report, knowing what we know about sponsored brands, um, if you are uh, really kicking some butt in these percentiles, you can pat yourself on the back. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're uh, 0.56, like I see we are here, and 75th percentile is 0.48, 
well, we're doing better than, yeah. I don't know, that's probably at least 85% of, of ads for this given uh, brand, or I guess, I suppose, category, more mm-hmm. importantly. Um, and, and that's like, that's great news. <laughs> got to pat ourselves on the back. I also, the 75th percentile for CTR is 0.24, and we're at 0.6. Wow. 0.24, uh, your competitors, yeah. it's like they're not even trying. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's huge power in, in sort of seeing that. And we know Amazon loves companies that serve ads with high click-through rates. I mean, they want people to click on ads. They want people to buy through ads because they make money. And um, that makes your advertising life a lot easier if you're serving ads that Amazon actually likes to serve. So it, people like to click on. So. Definitely, this is this is this has some pretty solid utility. So when you're thinking of you know crafting a good sponsored brand ad, like and you're looking at that click through rate and you're scratching your head, like is this a good click through rate or not? Like should I be going back to the drawing board and refiguring out what the components of my sponsored brand ad should be? This is now your 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 uh, smoking gun, telling you, hey, your click through rate is off the charts, doing better than the 75th percentile or it is down in the dumpsters and nobody clicks on your ad. <laughs> Imagine this thought experiment. An Amazon rep for one of your accounts sends you an email and says, hey, I just wanted to give you some data on click-through rates for sponsored brands in your account that are drawn from a huge data set on Amazon compared to your own, here you go. You would say, oh, that's a great email. Thank you for the information. Right. It's essentially what this is. No doubt, for sure, without a doubt. So, so understanding if you're sponsored brand ads have good clickability, good click-through rate, boom, this is awesome metric. Um, And then the last two, you know, they give us ACoS and they give us ROAS. Um, This is awesome. It's telling you for that brand how well you are truly performing, like what your return on ad spend or your ACoS is. I love how Amazon has shot themselves in the foot. Now they have to put ACoS and ROAS everywhere. You right. know, they could, they had to be different in the beginning. They had to start with ACoS when every other platform uses ROAS. And then they're like, all right, let's start including ROAS. And now they also have to do the extra work to like also piggyback ACoS everywhere too. Um, I think most people prefer ROAS. Um, so if, if we're looking at ROAS here, we have it here too. You know, I have my brand's category ROAS. And then I have the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th. And I, I'm feeling like Steph Curry sinking threes because we're doing better than the 75th percentile too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see some pretty promising numbers here too. And actually, one thing we noticed here, Mike, now let's let's go back to the gate cost one. Bit confusing. Robots makes sense. Like, so the example I see here, 4.62 for us, that's good. Mm-hmm. And then going through the percentiles, 1.6, 3.5, uh, and 3.97. So uh, not much of a difference there between the 50th and 75th right. percentile, but we're beating them all uh, on this particular yeah. category. Mm-hmm. However, an ACOS uh, for this same one, you know, obviously you could do the math, but it says 21.6. <laughs> and then the percentiles for the ACOS, I think they like flipped a switch somewhere and yep. they meant to reverse them because the 25th percentile is 11 and going up to the 75th is 28. So uh, what, what they would be, you know, appearing to tell us there is that people who have a higher ACoS are uh, better. Maybe for Amazon, they right. feel that way. But <laughs> That's maybe, right. maybe they show their hand a little bit there. Yes. Um, or maybe one of their algo is in the background just said, well, higher numbers, higher percentile, there you go, good. Because that's the way it works for ROAS. Right. Um, I think they screwed up. They sure did. So, so yeah, they have that flipped. It should be start with the higher ACoS in the worst percentiles and then with a lower ACoS and the better percentiles. So this is awesome too. You know, if you're ever looking at your campaigns and you're, you know, you are basically wondering how you stack up and for PPC, there's so much angst. I know that when I'm optimizing a campaign, I'm always like scratching my head, like, man, can I make this even better? Like, what are other people doing in my industry? Are are they doing better than me? Here, you kind of have it for your sponsored brand ads. You can actually see, you know, the bottom 25% ROAS, the 50th, point ROAS for that category in sponsored brands in the 75th percentile for good ROAS. Um, And that is a really cool metric. So like you're getting cool business intelligence. And I think when you start smacking all these different kinds of business intelligences together, 
you get a much better, clearer look about how to optimize and manage your campaigns. You know, one thing here, uh, I always like to think in terms of like the utility of this. You know, it's cool that we're, because my this ROAS that I have is also better than the 75th percentile. So, you know, aside from patting ourselves on the back here, you know, what would, what would your reaction be if you were to open it up and your ROAS, for whatever reason, maybe your take on a new client, so they are unoptimized, but you go in there and you're in the 25th percentile for ROAS. Like, what, what would be your framework to walk through potentially trying to fix that? My first two thoughts would be, let's check the impressions and see, are we really getting a lot of impressions to see that this is a valid figure? And then I would try to figure out, okay, for this uh, category, subcategory, how much spend is there? So if there's a substantial amount of spend flowing through, they got impressions, and that's a valid concern if they are sub- 25% or just in 25%. And I would want to bring that up on like an audit or flag it in a discussion and say, you know, based on benchmarking your figures against what we have got from Amazon's report here, um, this is underperforming and probably needs to be ameliorated. As we all mm-hmm. know, Mike, comparing ourselves to other people is the the key is happiness in life. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so yes, we all love comparing ourselves at the gym. Man, that person's lifting more than me. Right. Uh, so, so here you have the ultimate uh, glutton for punishment. Constantly, look, <laughs> constantly looking at yourself. Man, am I getting enough impressions? Oh man, <laughs> am I, is my ROAS better than my competition? Oh my god, I'm not even better than the 25th percentile. That's right. Uh, I saw a screenshot. Mike was putting his ROAS on there, and he had five times. And I know right. what his percentile is. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, it's, so it's, it's really tough. But I, what, what I think is helpful here, because I know that people compare themselves to other people they meet in Facebook groups and all these things, this actually is valuable because it helps provide a little bit more context to just your industry. And you know this, is, this can be really helpful business intelligence um, for us. <sighs> Any final thoughts about the sponsored brands brand category benchmark report? <laughs> I'm not sure which one of these two I like more. Uh, they both provide a different set of data and you know, they are beta in Amazon. So my final thought is I hope they don't just disappear because sometimes (laughs) that's what that means with Amazon, but I hope they're here to stay and I hope they continue to be refined and expanded for sponsored products for that Mm -hmm. matter. I hope they expand to sponsored products too. Um, cause that'd be awesome. I hope they make this information available in the API too. That'd be awesome. Um, I hope that we're able to download this in a, um, bulk file export. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. So just give us every, give us all the data everywhere we will ever be, so that we don't have to combine things from different places. Right. Um, new reports. Go out there, download them, use them, check them out. And um, I think that's it for this episode. Have a good one, everyone, and we'll see you next week here in the Badger Town. Do I say anything at the end like, bye? (laughs) I'm just like.